have any uh, public comment to start? Okay, we'll go to uh, Commissioner Newman for the approval of Thank you, Mayor. I uh, move that the minutes from the regular scheduled meeting of uh, Monday, October 5th, be approved as written. I second. Motion to second. Any corrections? Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Mabry? Aye. Commissioner Fabia? Aye. Commissioner Newman? Aye. Mayor Quirum? Aye. Uh, next we'll be invoices, and we'll start with uh, Mr. Newman. Okay. Um, tonight I've got the bills for Public Affairs and Department of Accounts and Finances and the Planning Department, $19,391.60. Administration is $10,325.11. Self-insurance is $2,700.81. Economic Development, $15.05. Tourism, $7,143.88. Property, main, property department is $10,619.89. Community development, $1,816.25. General obligation is $87,486.26. Tax increment financing of $10,000. For a grand total for public affairs in the Department of Accounts and Finances of $149,498.85. Mayor, I've uh, reviewed these bills, find them to be true and accurate, and move that they be paid. I will second. Motions for the second. Any corrections or comments? We'll call the uh, Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Mabry? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Fabian? Aye. Commissioner Newman? Aye. Mayor Quirum? Aye. I'll go to Commissioner Mabry. Thank you, Mayor. This evening, I have the bills and payrolls for the Department of Streets and Public Improvement as follows. The Street Department, a total of $48,418. 36 cents. Wastewater collection, $16,087.29. Wastewater treatment, $1,266.07. Wastewater administration, $26.96. The sanitary department, $7,948.06. And garbage expenditures of $20,956.25.
should have been something that was uh, uh, included in the original bidding on this project, but wasn't. And uh, with the weather coming on, we need to get this job, this work going. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a vote. Motion and second. Great. Okay, Commissioner Warren. Aye. Commissioner Mabry. Aye. Commissioner Fabius. Aye. Commissioner Newman. Aye. Mayor Quirum. Aye. Follow up with that, uh, Mayor. We have then Ordinance 01510-0180, authorizing street repairs by Mass Asphalt. Again, as you mentioned, this is street repairs that will be for Bailey Subdivision as well as South Church Street. And many of these repairs will be able to build off of come next year for our, our final road date. So we're, we're not just throwing our money away, it's going towards uh, improvements that will be built on for the final surface in 2016. Um, the, Sum is not to exceed $65,476.50. I move that we um, accept this bid from Van Tassel. Second. Motions and second. Any comments or corrections? Comment. I, I will say that uh, the $65,000, we are uh, going to have that money. We're not looking to finance this. Uh, there will be some sacrifices in some departments, but we will have the, uh, we will have the funding for this project going forward. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Mabry? Aye. Commissioner Fabian? Aye. Commissioner Newman? Aye. Mayor Quirum? Aye. Thank you, Commissioner Mabry. I'm going to Commissioner Newman. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight I've got a recommendation from the Princeton Planning Commission uh, for approval of a final plat for a two lot subdivision at approximately uh, 1225 North Euclid Avenue. Uh, the uh, Planning Commission has reviewed this and suggests that the City of uh, Princeton City Council approve it, and I make a motion that we approve this. Second. Motion and second. Any comments? Good call roll. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Mabry? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Fabia? Aye. Commissioner Newman? Aye. Aye. Mayor Quero? Aye. The next item is uh, the monthly building permit report. For residential, we had 12 new permits, totaling about $29,538. Under commercial and industrial, we had uh, four permits for a total of uh, $322,850. Uh, the bulk of that, um, of those of that new construction, is for the Grant Crematorium uh, being erected on West Fruit Street. Uh, so permits through September are 82 for this year, totaling uh, just under uh, $11.5 million. Compared to a year ago, where we had 86 permits for about approximately $4 million, and two years ago, 60 permits, approximately $5 million. So I've got married. Thank you, Commissioner Newman, and now for the uh, Commissioner Warren. Thank you. Tonight we have an opportunity to discuss um, some electric generation spare parts issues. Um, we've been offered uh, some spare parts from uh, the city of St. Cloud, Florida. Actually, that's where the engine is located. The first part of your packet shows you what these parts would cost if you go out and have to purchase them new. As you can see by the final total, it's $2,635,140. Uh, the parts that are being offered to us are opposite or used, but it's at a greatly discounted of $210,000. And that's the engine disassembled, the parts packaged up and shipped up here to Princeton. This is for one of our Enterprise engines. And as you may recall, the Enterprise are somewhat less reliable than the rest of them, although not by much. I know 10 years ago we had to replace a crankshaft in one of the Cooper engines, and that crankshaft alone was $180,000. And if Jeff Makers, would you come up and I'm sure these people have some questions, you can maybe explain a lot better than I can. Jeff, can you slide the, the switch toward you? Uh, Commissioner Warren mentioned, Jeff, that uh, this is, these are parts for the uh, Enterprise engines. Correct. Right. How many Enterprise engines do we have? It would be uh, the two largest engines, uh, seven and eight. And on, on top of that, seven has already been overhauled, but we're looking to overhaul eight in the next year or two. So these parts would obviously be very handy. When, when was seven overhauled? How long ago? Probably. How many of these parts would be needed for the overhaul? You don't ever know until you get in there. Sure. Um, I wouldn't expect that we would need all of them, 
But we have two engines that these parts can be used on. So these parts are interchangeable between yes. seven and eight. Yes. What kind of inventory do we have now for parts like this? Um, we have, I think, maybe like one piston, a couple liners, um, no crankshaft. Um, you know, some of the basic stuff that's really, really hard to get. We do, you know, when we, we have the opportunity, we usually see them because they are hard to get. If you you notice the one invoice uh, for a piston for this engine, the delivery time was 56 weeks. I know this is just an estimate. I mean, this is $86,000, $87,000. That's just uh, to tell us that what these pistons would cost right now. Well, there's, there's actually a quote in there from GE. It would be the next page after $2.6 million. Yeah, that was an actual order that's been placed. That's just telling us what this would cost us if we. If we went out and were right. brand new parts, yeah. And the thing that, that bothered me most was the 56 weeks. Um, and the other thing, too, is if you can find used parts out there, you know, a piston or a liner or something, generally you can figure it's going to be about 60% of a brand new. Have we done this before? Part, uh, bought a whole bought, engine like this? Well, maybe not a whole engine, but bought uh, used parts on oh, a regular yeah. basis. Yeah, because you generally can't find new, new oh. parts. Oh. And if you do, you can see what the lead things are. And your success has been pretty good with yeah. With yeah. Patents. If you have the right connections, you can generally find them, um, but you know they're, they're getting fewer and fewer to find. You know, harder to find. Is there any reason to believe that they need to be seen before we decide, or well, they is there a good faith agreement between them and us that if something <laughs> isn't what we think is satisfactory? Sure, then? sure. Um, and. And uh, Larry Wheeler, who we got this estimate from, he will be down there and see all the parts before they get crated up and, and shipped. And how do we pay for it? Do we know? Is this I mean, where does money come into it? Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, well, it's not in our budget, so it would have to come out of reserves. Um, and just just a heads up, this is this opportunity is in front of us now, but we're also looking at another engine up in Michigan later this week for the Worthington which is another engine in the near future is going to have to be overhauled. It'll probably be something similar to this. How many more of these engines do we have? Two. Two. Okay. Okay. One of them was overhauled probably seven or eight years ago, and the other one needs to be here in the near future. So, Jeff, has, I've read through this a couple of different times you've been down it, uh, when we got this packet. So, what we're looking at is then we're buying this huge engine, I guess, correct, 190000 and it's twenty thousand dollars for the crankshaft and gear assembly for a total of two ten. Is that correct? Correct. That's delivered. I, I think that's a very prudent purchase myself. I think that you know, the Commissioner Morris told us in the past. I think that we certainly want to um, trust our department heads on this, and if this is an opportunity to, to move forward, I think we need to be looking to seriously at purchasing this. <coughs> How many uh, hours does this engine have on it? Uh, actually, I knew it was less than 50000 I heard you guys talking about that, but it actually has 21000 hours on the engine. And the crankshaft has less than 10000 What's, you know, I, what's, what's considered high? That's, that's very low hours for an engine like this, you know, as, as back in the 70s. So, it, it's been there a long time. Do we know what it was used for in what kind of, uh, setting? It was, uh, kind of like ours, emergency. You know, when the engine's power, they fire these up keep and do we know why they're selling them? Because they're replacing them with gas turbines. <laughs> time frame on the purchase? Is there a time frame as to when the decision? I think they would um, they would like to know if, if this is kind of a yes or a no. I, as far as the, the formality, I, I don't think that's an issue if we have to go through two readings. But they would just like to know if, if it's favorable or, or just, you know, we're going to pass on it. Well, we, we do have the money. It is in reserves. Correct. And that is what the reserves are for. That's why we passed an ordinance several years ago to protect our reserves for situations um, such as this. Um, and we'll build those reserves up again um, as well. So. Um, this was this is on the uh, this is on the agenda, so we can take a vote on it. Well, I'll make a motion. I agree that this seems like it's an opportunity.
machinery that we probably shouldn't have some. But you say we're going to be looking at uh, where is it on the Michigan, you know, uh, smaller engine? Yeah, kilowatt-wise, it is a smaller engine, yes. Okay. Um, but those those parts are probably harder to come across than the Enterprise. We're going to be looking at more higher cost? Um, from what they're telling me, it'd be about the same same as this in that, that ballpark. And what are our reserves sitting at approximately? About $4 million. I move that we go ahead with this purchase and uh, instruct our attorney to drop our ordinance. Means that we can't go out the bid. So, to purchase this for two hundred ten thousand dollars. I'll second. Motion to second. Any further comment? Mayor Cole. Commissioner Warren. Aye. Commissioner Magri. Aye. Commissioner Fabia. Aye. Commissioner Newman. Aye. Mayor Quirum. Aye. Thank you, Joe. Thank you.